according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them with glory in appearance and not in heart. Father, we thank you for this afternoon to once again listen to your word. I pray, Lord, that you will speak to each and every one of us regarding this subject of accountability. May we know and understand, O oh God, that we are stewards. And as such, Lord, we need to be found faithful. But then as we look at ourselves and do an accounting of our lives, there are so many instances and so many times wherein we are just not faithful to you. We're just doing, Lord, the things that we think will give us joy and satisfaction not even thinking oh god that in doing so we are hurting people we are hurting ourselves and most of all we are hurting you oh god because it is your purpose lord for us to be faithful to glorify you and to live lord a life that will bring glory to your name so i pray lord that as we study this, may you impress in our hearts that there must come a time in our lives, O oh God, if it did not yet happen, that we need to make a stand against sin, that we need to make a stand against those things, Lord, that is making you sad, that we make a decision, O oh God, once and for all, to do those things that will bring honor and glory to your name. So I pray, Lord, that you make us understand about this and help us, Lord, to implement them, apply them, Lord, in our lives. As I teach this, Lord, give me wisdom and make me a blessing to your people. And as they listen, give them understanding. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So actually, the uh, main uh, verse that we are going to look at and use as a springboard not to be uh, unjust to the uh, context of the verse is verse number 10 when the Bible says that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Meaning to say that as we live our lives, we may do as we wish. Or we may obey God as he made known his will to each and every one of us. But no matter how we live our lives, there will come a day. There will come a time that we are make, going to make an accounting of what we have done in our lives. Of everything that we have done, everything that we have said, everything that entered into our mind, every actions that we have made. Because we will all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. We know in another uh, passage that when we appear before the judgment seat of Christ, then our works will be tested. And if they are made of Gold, silver, gold, and precious stones, they will abide, and we are going to receive rewards because of them. But if our works will be of low quality, like wood, hay, and stubble, they will be burned, and we are going to suffer loss. We're not going to lose our salvation because it is already settled at the cross. Amen? It is something that is forever something that is sure, something that will never be taken away from us, something that is in the possession and the keeping of God. So our eternal salvation 
is not the question at the judgment seat of Christ. But everything that we have done in this body since we got saved are the things that we are going to make an accounting of in the sight of the Lord. There will be joy and there will be tears during that day because we are going to rejoice for the things that we were able to do in the power of the Holy Spirit so that they will result in rewards and we will also cry because of the lost opportunity that because of our neglect which rewards will not be given to each and every one of us of course we are not doing things for the Lord for rewards it is because we love him it is because we want to honor him and glorify him but there is nothing wrong if we are going to be rewarded by God. So we call these things as accountability. That is why we need to live our lives as steward, knowing that one day we are going to be answerable to God. That is what we call accountability. It is the state of being accountable or answerable to someone who is in authority. We need to understand that we are liable for every action we take and every thought we have. The Bible even says that every idle words, we will give an account to God that day. We will one day be called on to render an account of our life. I remember there was a... Uh, a pamphlet or a, a track, a chick track that were given before or uh, that they made and the title is uh, This is Your Life. Of course, it uh, pertains to an unbeliever uh, who will go to hell if he will reject the Lord Jesus Christ and if that be uh, unbeliever will accept the Lord Jesus Christ, then he will be uh, given eternal life, forgiven, given eternal life and he will be in heaven. But, at the judgment seat of Christ, the whole of our lives will not be showcased. It will be our works. It will be the things that we have done for the Lord, Jesus Christ. So we need to understand that we bear the obligation for each action, thought, or even spoken word. That is why we are the servants of Jesus. We are the slaves of of Christ and therefore one day we are going to answer to our master. Remember that in this world we own nothing. Not even our selves. We belong to God by creation and we belong to God by redemption. Not only that God created us but he redeemed us. So every saved person is twice owned by God. And that makes it uh, more important that we live our lives according to His will. Because of the things that the Lord had done for us. So because of this, we need to understand that we are merely stewards of what God has entrusted to each and every one of us. We're stewards of our time. We're stewards of our energy. We're stewards of our passion, our mind, our body, our money. And we are stewards of all the possessions that we think we have in this world. So sad to say that many people revel in their sins because they do not believe that one day they are going to make an account before God. Look at Matthew chapter 12. Verses 36 to 37. The Bible says, But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by these words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So people do not care what they say. People do not care even if they curse. People do not care about the things that they're saying. They gossip, they slander, they destroy people. Why? Because they do not realize or they do not even believe that one day they're going to give an account for every words that they have spoken before God. Of course, 
if, if, we, if they are unbelievers, they will be judged accordingly. If they are believers, then they are going to suffer loss. Because as steward, there is a requirement. First, first Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 2. And the Bible is very clear. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. If you are not a faithful steward, then you are not going to hear the uh, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. We are not going to receive the good things from God. The good things for the things that we have done. Instead, we are going to, yes, be saved, yet so as by fire. That is what the Bible says. That's why as stewards, we need to be faithful. Amen? That's why even in the midst of pandemic, we need to be faithful unto God. It is not just a steward will never think of himself alone. He will always think of the master, how he may please the master, how he may conduct himself in order for the glory and honor of the master. He is not acting for himself, but he is acting in behalf of somebody else, and that is God. So as a steward, there is no place for pride. There is no place for selfishness. There is no a place for just thinking about yourself. Why? Because as a steward, we own nothing and everything that we may have belongs to God. So therefore, there is nothing to be proud of. Amen? But sad to say, people may amass wealth and then they will use it in order to look down to other people and sometimes even think that they are better than God. So that is sad. But the steward must be found faithful. Look at Luke chapter 12, verse 48. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes, for unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required, and to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. You see, the concept here is to whom much is given, much will be required. You see, sometimes we look at other people and we become jealous. And we envy them. And we say, they have so much in this life. They have so much in this world. And even in the church, they have so much gifts. They have so much talent. Don't. Why? Because they, their accounting to God is proportionate to what the Lord has given them. What's important is you mind what was given to you. Be faithful where you are at. Be faithful to to the things that the Lord has given you, and if you will be faithful, even though it is not much, but your reward will be much in the sight of God. Why? Because that was given to you, and you are only accountable to what was given to you. Hindi ka naman mag-account sa hindi binigay sa'yo. Hindi ako preacher, paano na ako? Hindi ako member ng choir, hindi ako magaling kumanta, paano na ako? Paano ang reward ko? Be faithful in congregational singing. Be faithful in your in, in the gift that God has given to you. It doesn't matter uh, how small it is. Because what counts is not the amount. What counts is the faithfulness in the things that were entrusted unto us. Amen? Yung iba naiinggit, ba't ka maiinggit? Ang inggit eh, Ninanasa mo yung hindi naman binigay sa'yo? Doon ka lang sa binigay sa'yo. Ang sweldo niya, 10,000 ako, 5,000 lang. Doon ka lang. Yun naman responsibility niya, iba sa responsibility mo. To whom much is given, much will be required. And if they fail, just imagine their fall. And if you fail, even though it is not a good thing, but it may not cost you that much because not that much was given or entrusted unto you. Look at Romans chapter 2, verse number 12. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. There is a standard, and we need to remain in that standard. God is the judge, let him judge. But we have to do what we are supposed to do. 
the, the Jews were given the law. It is their, their responsibility to do that. We are given the grace. It is our responsibility to live under the grace of God. And how we live is something that we will account to God. So let us look at our accountability to God. You see, we are held accountable to God because He is perfectly holy. And because He is the creator of all things, therefore, He is the person that all of us will give an account. Each and every one of us will one day stand before God and will be held accountable. This applies to both believers and to unbelievers, both to save and to the unsaved. If we have repented of our sins and placed our trust in Christ, then Christ's righteousness will cover us. So, on the judgment, uh, great white throne judgment, we will not be there because we are already passed from death unto life because the righteousness of Jesus Christ was imputed unto us. And therefore, our judgment will be the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is something that we need to be thankful to God. Amen? And because of that, then we need to serve God. We need to do what will glorify God in our lives. Why? Because of the vicarious death of the Lord Jesus Christ, we, no longer, uh, we are no longer to be the subject of that great white throne judgment, but we will be the subject of the judgment seat. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Romans chapter 14 verse 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Hebrews chapter 4.13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him. With whom we have to do. So you see whether you are saved or not. God knows everything. We are naked in the sight of God. That is the reason why we need to deal these things with God before the judgment. If you are unsafe, deal with it before the great white throne judgment will come. If you are saved, deal with it before we come to the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because we will give an account. We are unsearchable to God. And, and the thing is that we cannot make any excuse. Because God knows everything. No matter, you see, in our mind, we can compartmentalize. We can block some areas of our mind that we do not want to remember. But with God, everything is known. Everything is seen by God. Everything is just, as the Bible says, naked and opened unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Revelation chapter 20, verse number 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So you see, our works will have a bearing in the judgment whether we are saved or not. If we are not saved, then our works will condemn us more. But if we are saved, then our works will be the subject for our reward. That is why our action is very important no matter who we are. But we need also to understand that if you are not saved, no matter what you do, is not going to buy you a place in heaven. But it will cause you to, su to uh, suffer in hell. But all people are accountable to God. Amen? Not only that, but we are also accountable to each other. So, on one hand, we are accountable to God. But on the other hand, we are also accountable to others. We are accountable to our parents. We are accountable to our spouse. We are accountable to our children. We are accountable to our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And we are accountable to the lost and dying world. So that is our accountability to others. 
us children we are accountable to treat our parents with respect and as parents we are accountable to provide and to love our children and see to it that they will grow up knowing repentance of sin and faith to the Lord because that is as a parent that is our main accountability to God as employees you are accountable to your employers to do your job well yes you you may think that you are uh, at the uh, negative uh, negatively uh, receiving receiving negatively at the end of uh, your relationship with your employer but you may protest peacefully and while doing your job well because that is our accountability to them and of course the employers are accountable to see to it that their employees are being protected and are being compensated according to whatever work they are doing in your company or in your firm that's why if you're a Christian that accountability is magnified many times diba? pag employer ka hindi ka Christian wala ka lang masyadong pakialam pero pag employer ka Christian ka namamagnify yun many times kasi mas alam mo yung accountability mas, mas alam mo yung stewardship and if you're an employee and you are a Christian, then it magnifies also your responsibility and accountability because you know that yes, you are working, but you are not actually working for them. You're working for God. And as a child of God, as a steward of God, then in everything that we do, we must exemplify faithfulness. Kaya pa Christian ka, matindi yung accountability mo. Inaargabyado ka na, pero nagtatapat ka pa rin. Tarating ang time, kung ayaw mo, siyempre hindi ka ma mananatili, pero as long as you are there, you are responsible to give your best because we are doing things for God. We must remember that no matter who or what we are, we are first Christians before other things. And we must be found faithful as a child of God. So being accountable to one another is a duty given to us by the Lord. The scripture, remember, does not tell us to never judge one another, but when we must render judgment, it must be the right kind of judgment, a judgment that is according to the word of God. Amen. Judging one another rightly is not an opportunity to shun someone that you don't like. Rather, it is a solemn duty to lovingly warn someone of their sin and bring them to Christ so that they might repent. If they're not saved for salvation, if they are saved for restoration of their fellowship to God. So that is why we are accountable to each other. What when the Lord allowed us to be together, especially here in the church, we are accountable towards one another. That's why we are not busy bodies, we are not meddling with the affairs of other people, but we are simply concerned. Because God said, love one another. And accountability, being accountable to each other, is showing that we love one another. We must see to it that each and every one of us are walking in the Lord day by day, and if we are swerving to the left or swerving to the right, then it is our responsibility to tell them and point them to the right way so that they will not go astray. That is why the Bible says, open rebuke is better than secret love. That is why even to the elders, it was mentioned to rebuke them sharply that they may learn about the things that they are doing. So that is our accountability to each and every one of us. We know that we are walking this path of sanctification. And in this path, this, this road is not smooth. It is filled with bumps and potholes. There are uh, 
what we call detours along the way, it is something that is very hard to negotiate. So if we are not going to help each other, then we are actually hampering the uh, a forward movement of one another. So as we negotiate this hard way, then we need to root one for another. We need to encourage each other so that even though there may be a weakness or we might get tired because of, of sin and because of uh, infirmities or whatever it is, then we can help one another, encourage one another to keep on keeping on so that all of us may be able to finish our course. Amen? Amen. To fight a good fight and to keep the faith that was given to us by God. You see, when we have an encounter with one another, no matter how, uh, sh shall we say, negative it might be, that there is a friction. Remember the encouragement of Proverbs 27, 17. This is what the Bible says. Iron sharpened iron. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. You see, sometimes you need to rebuke friend. There will be friction. And don't you know that whenever there is fiction, a friction between two objects, especially if they are steel, they actually sharpen each other. So that is the reason why we are accountable to each other. That is the reason why we need to mind each other, to encourage each other, to rebuke each other, to help each other, because by doing so, we are sharpening each other. We are helping one another. That's why Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 is a great exhortation that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Why? Because as we assemble, then we have time to exhort one another. We have time to encourage one another. We have time to remind one another that the Lord coming is approaching. And if the Lord is coming and His coming is near, then let us be serious in our business with God. That is what we can do. We should be gathering in order to become better, not gathering in order to become bitter. And it's so sad that we have experienced in the past months that we are nothing but hypocritical, sitting down, listening to the Word of God, but filled with bitterness in our hearts. Not only bitterness, but evil intention against our own brothers and sisters in the Lord. There should be no place in our heart for that. If there is something that you don't like, be accountable to that person. That person may not even know that he's doing something wrong. You talk to him in a gentle spirit, in a loving spirit, in a humble way. And I believe that a person with the Holy Spirit approached that way is going to accept the mistakes that he is committing against other people. Minsan kaya lang hindi tayo maging matagumpay sa pakikipag-usap sa tao, pabalbal yung salita natin eh. Imbis na, uh, kapatid, pag-usapan natin mabuti to. Hindi, shut up! Come na agad eh. Oh. Siyempre, pag ginanong ka, gaganti na. Shut up ka rin! Oh. Eh di shut na kayo. Sarada na. Ay, hindi ba? Ang sabi ng Bible, a soft answer. Turn it away, wrath. Oh. Kaya puro daga eh, kasi sigawan kayo na sigawan eh. Oh. Usap ng maayos. Upo kayo. Mag-usap kayo. Oh. Eh, hindi kasi ganun nangyayari. Pastor, maganda naman ang purpose ko, nirebuke ko. Eh, iba, yung, iba yung rebuke mo eh. Parang ano yan eh. Parang sandata yan eh. Ang ginamit mo, Shotgun. Ako naman, Pastor, pagkatapos nun, tapos na eh. Talagang tapos na siya. Shotgun eh. Pag bitarin mo yung shotgun, butas-butas ang katawan niya eh. 
Hindi ganun. Kailangan merong gentleness. Amen? Kasi accountable tayo sa bawat isa. Look at uh, James chapter 5, verse number 16. These are things that will remind us of our accountability to one another. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Ito mo, gagaling ka pa. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. If you are wrong, be man or woman enough to accept your, your sin or your mistake and confess it to that person and be reconciled and be healed with that person and pray for one another. You see, it is very hard to get angry with the person that you are praying for. Diba? Ang dali mo magali sa tao, hindi mo pinagpipray. Pero nalang, kung prayer mo, Panginoon, kunin na ni Lord. Yung tao na yan. Even though you are at odd with that person, when you sincerely pray for that person, you will see that there is tenderness in your heart. Hindi nyo ba na, napapansin yun? Galit na galit ka tapos nasa prayer list, na-assign sa'yo. Di ba? Halimbawa, nagpe-pray ka, na-assign sa'yo yung salvation, nakalagay doon salvation for anino family. Ano nang laktawan mo? Pagkano maligtas po ang ano, ang uh, tinga family, maligtas po ang uh, Peña family. Tapos nakita mo, Panginoon, maligtas po yung in-skip mo. Hirap noon. Doon pa lang, wag ka na mag-pray. Eh. Amen? Wag ka na mag-pray. Why? Because God will not listen to our prayers. May nilaktawan ka eh. Pero nakita mo, pagpe-pray mo, bago mo banggitin, Panginoon, patawad po sa galit na nasa puso ko. Sana po masave itong Anino family. Oh. Di ba? May pagpe-pray mo ng maayos. Magkakaroon ng tenderness sa iyong puso. Why? Because in our prayer to God, I hope we do not want to be a hypocrite. Because it is just between you and God. And you know that God knows everything. So that is showing our accountability towards one another. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. And be ye kind one to another. That's our accountability. Tender hearted. That's why, as much as possible, you do not use words that will wound a person. Kamukha nung oh, di ba? Hindi mo dapat sabihin yun. At saka yung wag. Hindi maganda. Masakit yun. At saka kamong ganun sa kanya? No, you must be tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Ano ba nagawa sa'yo? Pastor, ikaw, masasabi mo bang derechahan? Alam naman namin kung anong ginawa sa'yo ng tao, mapapatawad mo ba? Bakit hindi? Ang totoo, pinatawad ko na! Eh bakit, Pastor, ganyan pa? Abay, pinatawad mo pero kailangan niyang maranasan ang consequence ng kanyang ginawa. Bakit? Pag hindi niya naranasan, uulitin niya. And that is my accountability towards them. Nako niyo mga kapatid? That's why, will God not forgive us? He will. But chastening must happen. Because that is where we will learn. If there is no chastisement, then there is no learning. And when there is no learning, there will be no changing. That's why people must understand that in our accountability, even though there is forgiveness, there is tenderheartedness, there must also be the application 
of the process of discipline. And that is part of accountability. Amen? That's there. Accountability. Look at James chapter 4, verse number 17. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not to him, it is a sin. It is our accountability one to another. You know somebody has a need. You know that there is something that you must do for him and for her, and you did not do it. Then we are committing sin. That's why if you have a blessing and you know there is a need, then it is our responsibility to provide for that need. Because if not, then we are committing sin. So pastor, so you mean to say that uh, every time there is a need, then we need to provide that? Yes, if it is a need. O kailangan ko ng ano, kailangan ko maging high mamayang gabi, pastor. Pompyangin kita dyan. High. Hindi need yun, capricho yun, vice yun. Kailangan ko pong ma maka karga kahit 120 lang, pastor. Ba hindi yun. Hindi needs yun eh. Ang needs, ang kategory niyan, food, shelter, clothing. Yan ang kategory ng needs. Wala siyang matulugan, may space, provide mo. Wala siyang makain, may pagkain, pakainin mo. Wala siyang damit, may damit, damitan mo. Yun yun. Pero beyond that, it is up to you. Amen? So that is what, what the Bible is talking about. It is not about people who are being self-entitled. Oh, I have a need. You must help me. No. You thank God somebody help you. But you do not demand for help. Kaya yung iba, walang utang na loob eh. Tinulungan mo, tapos nagkaroon kayo ng problema later on, sabi, tapos papaalala sa kanya, tinulungan ka ng ba, responsibilidad niya yun. Binigyan siya ng Diyos. Much is given to Him. So much is required. Pasalamat ka siya, nangailangan ako kung hindi, magaganap niya ba yung kalooban ng Diyos sa buhay niya? Kaya may mga taong ganun eh. Yung tulong mo sa kanila, parang utang na loob mo sa kanila. Nakapagka nakaproblema, ikaw ang may problema, sila hindi. Parang yung pulube. Pasalamat kayo, may pulube. Kung walang pulube, papaano ninyong matutupad yung utos ng Diyos na tulungan ninyo ang mga mahihirap. Ah, see? Sige, tingnan ko nga. Kung masutu, mat, matupad nyo yung kalooban ng Diyos, kung walang, mahirap na katulad ko. Ah. Di ba sabi ng Bible, you take care of the widows, amen? We must do that. Pero hindi dapat sabihin ng widow, Oy, ha, pasalamat kayo! Merong widow dito! Kung wala, paano nyo susunod yung kalooban ng Diyos? Gali kayo! Magkandara pa kayo! Tulungan nyo ako. Ba hindi, dapat gawin sa widow yon flying kicking mo para ma-realize niya ang sinasabi niya. Amen? We are accountable both ways. Hindi lang yung meron. Accountable din yung wala. That's why, when, uh, Sister Maribel knows this, whenever there are, there are people who are begging for alms, if we can see that they really could not do anything to help themselves, we give them. But if they are able body, strong, or children, we do not give them. Why? Because that is not helping them. You are actually pushing them further down their, their condition. Because they are not learning how to be responsible for themselves and accountable to other people. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 to 7. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to hold some words, 
even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and stripes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil, surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry, out, carry nothing out. So, you see our accountability to each other. There are people who, look at verse number 5. There are people who think that, God, that gain is godliness. And they will flaunt this to other people. I remember my pastor. My pastor is, uh, before he, he surrendered to the ministry, he's earning so much. He's one of the top salesmen at Ocampo's uh, uh, appliances company. Pampanga, sikat na sikat yun. And he's, according to him, he will become a millionaire in a few years' time because of his uh, uh, performance. But the Lord called him. And he turned his back on the tens of thousands of pesos that he's earning replaced by 15 pesos a week and take on a pastorate. And he has a brother-in-law who is the former mayor of Guagua. And whenever he goes there, because they need something, they, sometimes they need help. And whenever he goes there, he will say that, boy, that's how he called my pastor, boy, do you think that your God is the true God or my God? Because look at what my God gave to me. And what your God has given to you, nothing. Why? They thought that gain is godliness. And there are people, sad to say, even in Christianity, that are like this. Pastor who will say that if you are poor, then you are not right with God. My. If you do not have this kind of a building, if you do not have that kind of a car, then it shows that you are not faithful to God. Look at me. I'm giving millions to the ministry. That is why God is blessing me. Supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Do not get near with this kind of person because evil communications corrupt good manners. Sumama ka sa mga mahiyain, magiging mahiyain ka. Sumama ka sa mga matapang, tatapang ka. Sumama ka sa mga bastos, magiging bastos ka. Sumama ka sa mga korap, magiging korap ka. Pero samahan mo ang mga makajos, magiging makajos ka. Why? Because there is an influence. And that shows that we are accountable to each other. So, if that is the case, then in our accountability, we must Apply this with humility. It is very hard to be accountable to God and to each other without clothing yourself with humility. Why? Because uh, being accountable to God is ultimately a call to humility. You cannot be prideful and lovingly call someone else to repentance. You cannot be you cannot have an attitude of holier than thou in real accountability. Because when you do that, you're not accountable to people. You are bragging or lifting up your self. So there must be humility. A person who is accountable to God and to his fellow men will exemplify humility in his life. Remember that we are still in the flesh. There will always be a struggle because we have not yet reached our 
finish line in the process of our sanctification. Therefore, there will be mistakes. There will be sins along the way. So if you will uh, try to help people committing mistakes, you must do it in the spirit of humility. And if you are the one who commit the mistake, you accept it in the spirit of humility. What did the Bible say? That if someone be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of humility. Meekness. Why? Because when you do it with pride, then you are exemplifying a holier than thou attitude. Let us look at a few verses here. Proverbs 12, 15, please. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto the, unto counsel is wise. You see, you, you, you do not uh, insist your own way, but you need to hearken to wise counsel so that you will become wise. Ephesians 4, 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. You see, with lowliness and meekness, that's humility. And long suffering, no matter how long it will take, we need to forbear one another in love. Because it is very hard to, to bear somebody or somebody else's burden. If there is no loneliness, no meekness, no long suffering, and there is no love. In our hearts. Look at Philippians 2, 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. We need to consider one another, even if they are in sin or living in sin, or they have committed sin, even though we try to help them, to rebuke them, to be accountable to them, we need to do it in loneliness, considering one another or considering ourselves because one day the tables may be turned. And how do you want people to treat you when you are at the receiving end of the bargain? Di ba may nasabi mo? Masyado ka naman brutal. Kita mong sugatan na ako. Pinagbabalibag mo pa ako. Konting intindi naman, konting tenderness naman. Kung yun ang gusto mo, pag may ibang sugatan, ganun din ang trato mo sa kanya. Hindi yung, ha, oh, napala mo. Ano sabi ko sa'yo? Ayan, hindi ka nakinig. Huwag ganun. Pwede mo naman i-rebuke na may kababaan eh. Nang hindi mo inaapakan o dinudot-dot yung sugat ng tao. Para makarecover. Matulungan sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Proverbs 11.2 When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. When you're humble, you can say a lot of wise words than when you are prideful. Remember that. And Proverbs 29.23 A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. So makita mo, imbis na pagbagsak, you will be lifted up. You will be upheld by God in honor because of humility that you exemplify in considering one another. And then, uh, last point, amen? Ay, hindi pa, tuwa kayo eh. Second to the last point, para mabawi yung ano, is that God will always protect those people who practice accountability. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable unto you. You see, if you practice accountability, then you are going to be able to avoid so many heartache in life. Because you will only do those things that are profitable. And on the other hand, you will obey those people that have the rule over you as long as they are doing those things that are according to the will of God. 
So there is, there is the protection from repeating your mistake again and again and again. If, if, uh, if you are going to practice accountability, look at uh, Psalms chapter 19, 12 and 13. Who can understand these errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. You see, if there is accountability, you will understand that only God can help you avoid those sins in life. Why? Because, because you know that you're accountable. But if you don't care about accountability, you will do, just do everything that you want to do without any regard for the consequences of the action that you're going to do. Galatians 5.16 This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you walk in the Spirit, it means you're accountable to God, then you will not fulfill the lust of of the flesh or even if you fall you will stand up because you know that you will give an accounting and if you will continue crawling when you fell then there is so much accountability that you will answer to God and then lastly when we are accountable or when we practice accountability then we are becoming more like the Lord Jesus Christ why? Because if we're accountable, we avoid sin. And when we avoid sin, we live a holy life. And we live a, if we live a holy life continually, then we are, uh, what, you call, what do you call that? We are uh, becoming nearer to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are conforming slowly but surely to the image of the Lord. Jesus Christ. Look at 1 Peter 3.8. Finally, be all of one mind, having compassion, one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Is this not the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. With one mind, with compassion. Look at when he cried over Jerusalem because of the compassion in his heart. And then loving the brethren. Is, isn't this the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ? Pitiful or merciful and courteous that even though he was God, he did example after example on how to treat people right by the ways of God. And last verse, 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. Then all Israel gathered themselves to David. See? Be a followers of me even as I also am of Christ. Is, is a, the Apostle Paul Christ-like? Yes. Because there's so many things that he did, much the same way that the Lord Jesus Christ did while he was here on earth. And if we're going to follow his example, then we are going to be Christ-like by the grace of God. And why is Paul this kind of a person? Because he is accountable to God. He is accountable to his fellow man. He is also accountable to himself. That is why he says, for me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. I put it upon myself to live in a way that God will be pleased in my life. So when we practice accountability, then we are becoming like Christ. It may not be easy to be held accountable for everything that we do in our lives. Sometimes we disdain that. Sometimes we, we just don't like it that we are being rebuked, that we are being... Uh, uh, held accountable for everything that we have done. You did it. You, 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 you need to own it. You need to accept it. You need to repent. You need to, to uh, uh, go down fr from your uh, pedestal and just accept everything 
and even the consequences of what you have done. Sometimes we don't like that. But it is something that is beautiful in the sight of God. Because as we practice accountability, then we are becoming more pliable and more malleable. And it is easier for God to mold us in a way that will glorify Him. So that's accountability. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. I know times are hard. <clears throat> Not just hard, very hard. To so many people. To maybe all the people around the world. But that does not stop our being accountable to God. Being accountable to each other. And lastly, being accountable to our self. Remember, lastly, because most of the time, our accountability is only to ourselves. And it is occupying the highest priority where it should occupy the lowest priority priority in our lives. Because only those who are living for others, for God and for others, will be the one who can keep themselves. You know what God says? Whosoever will keep his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose it shall find it by the grace of God. So that is what we need to do. We need to be Accountable. Shall we stand up, please? Every head's bowed.